As humans, we have grown accustomed to what a large part of society considers the human life cycle to be like. You are born, you grow, you go to school, you go to work. Finally, if you work hard enough throughout your entire life, you get the chance to rest. You get the chance to take a break from the routine that's been your life and rest during your final years. Of course, that by itself, to most people, does not sound like a good way to live at all. By design, by means of surviving and adapting to the world around us, we spend the majority of our time working for or towards something. Living life that way, it is very easy to overlook the good things in life. Those are which bring us joy and make everything so meaningful. However, we can choose to go against the current. It is entirely possible. And these things, the aforementioned also great things in life, they're all around us. The gods envy us. They envy us because we're mortal. Because any moment may be our last. Everything is more beautiful because we're doomed. You will never be lovelier than you are now. We will never be here again. In a way, you are poetry material. You are poetry material. You are full of cloudy subtleties I am willing to spend a lifetime figuring out. Words burst in your essence, and you carry their dust in the pores of your ethereal individuality. That's a quote from Franz Kafka's Letters to Bellini. Now, while the two quotes may seem entirely related to one another, I find that there is a really interesting and important connection to me. You see, the first quote highlights the beauty in death. Being able to live your life to the fullest, based on the premise that you'll die someday. We're all going to die someday, and that gives beauty and meaning to everything that we do. The second quote that so happens also highlights the beauty in something. And while it's very easy to assume that the beauty that is being highlighted here is that of Molina, whom Kafka loved deeply, that's not the case. The beauty that is highlighted here is the way Kafka expresses love for Molina. This is not a quote that highlights how beautiful Molina may be physically, but rather the way Kafka talks about her. I learned that because I learned how to fall in love with my life. Now, the importance that I found in falling in love with my own life is that in doing so, I can stop myself from getting used to or tired of a routine that I would no longer find interesting or joyful. Now, routines in themselves, they're not bad things. They allow us to keep ourselves organized and allow our lives to flow smoothly. However, what can be very fun about routines is when we get tired of them. Now, the ideology that I'm elaborating on might just go against most, if not all, of the principles the world rules itself with. It is an ideology that goes against routine. It is meant to get you to fall in love with your own life by enjoying the unknown. Who here has ever found themselves wishing they could listen to a great song for the very first time? Show hands. That's the point of falling in love with your own life, having a frequent component in it that feels the exact same way as listening to a great song for the very first time. Now, in my experience, I have found this component to be poetry. And not just poetry by itself, but also other poetic forms of dialogue as well, as we can see in movies, as the one in Troy, or book quotes in Franz Kafka's Letters to Molina. I, it started with a few random poetry quotes from books here and there, renowned authors, as they kept popping up in my social media feeds. I very quickly realized that this style of word usage was something that I greatly enjoyed. I was fascinated by it. And so I took it upon myself. I made the effort to surround myself, to surround my social media feeds with this type of content. And it has now evolved past random appearances in my social media feeds. And it's now become something I have successfully surrounded myself with, making it a frequent component in my life. Now, there's more to this ideology than just taking my word for it. Who has ever heard about Stoicism? Or maybe you've heard about someone being called a Stoic before. Take Massimo Fiusci, for example. Massimo is a Liberian philosopher who really likes to talk about Stoicism. He notes that when people call others a Stoic, what they usually mean by that is someone who 
remains calm under pressure and avoids emotional extremes. However, he also acknowledges that Stoicism would be more accurately described as a philosophy in which, rather, rather than imagining an ideal society, the Stoic tries to deal with the world as it is, while pursuing self-improvement. Maximize enjoyment, and all that is good in life, while remembering to minimize pain and reducing negativity. In order to maximize enjoyment and minimize pain, what the Stoics do, and I do too, is they focus on the fact they have no control over external conditions. Instead, they choose to focus on having a proper understanding and control over themselves and how they react to that which they can't control. You may have noticed by now that Stoicism and the ideology I'm sharing with you share some similarities, and that's fully intentional. Now, going back to what I was saying about using poetry to fall in love with your own life, and this is a really important part of what I've been saying, so pay attention. In order to fall in love with your own life, you need to have this component that is practical and accessible. However, I mentioned I kept using poetry as this component, and poetry doesn't sound like it's a very practical and accessible component in my daily life. Poetry is usually something you have to pursue, something you have to look for in order to stumble upon it. So instead, instead of just turning to poetry, formal poetry literature, I turn to poetic language. This poetic language, as I said before, is not formal poetry, it's not literature, it's just a special style of word usage, a poetic use of the words. And you see, the reason why poetic language works so well for me is because it's easier to find. Take music lyrics, for example. It's so much easier to just listen to music in your everyday than to go and read a poetry book. And these words, the way the words are used in music lyrics, it goes incredibly well with poetic language. And so, the reason why these words, these this poetic language works so well for me is because I am fascinated by the way people can use these words to express and convey such powerful, deep, complex emotions. And, well, how could I not fall in love with my own life when I'm making the effort to constantly surround myself with feelings that I love? You see, as humans, we all love, not just people, but things, concepts, ideas, Activities, anything at all really. The way we interact with our environment has shown that as humans, we are capable of loving anything that is out there. The key to falling in love with your own life is to fill it with the things that you love. Spend as much time as you can experiencing that love, those feelings, and I can assure you, you will not get bored of it. You will not get tired of it. All that's going to happen is you're going to fall in love with your own life. Thank you.